discuss on a possible foreign exchange evaluation is continuing unabated. The latest of such insights provided is coming from analysts at Bativa Capital Management, who released a foreign exchange macro note on policy stance to short to ensure short-term stability. An economist at Bativa Capital, Moshope Arubai, was on our business morning program earlier this week, speaking on appropriate pricing of Nigeria's foreign exchange. Let's take a listen. There's a, an index which looks at key um, foreign exchange market variables like the exchange, the exchange rate, the um, interest rate, as well as the level of the um, external reserves. So the rate at which those variables are changing on a year-on-year -year basis signals, su suggests the level of pressure that the, um, that the foreign exchange market or the central bank could be experiencing in a period, in a period where there is, there is calls for de um, devaluation. In that note, you will see that prior to 2017, there was intense pressure in the market. But following the introduction of the INE window, the pressure has eased considerably. And even though we are, even though we are seeing um, slight pressure in the market, of course, all prices are lower. Our main source of forex is, is oil. And the oil, to CBN recently, up until recently, was under allotting to foreign portfolio investments. So we're seeing um, some of, uh, a bit of pressure from outflow of some foreign portfolio investments. All that trickled down into, foreign ex um, into the foreign exchange market, putting pressure on the Naira. But the pressure on the Naira and the CBN currently is not as intense as it was back then um, in 2016, 2017, that warranted for devaluation at that time. Also in that report, you, uh, you guys at Bertiva Capital mentioned that the pressure we are seeing now is really not as much as what we saw before the recession. So the question is, when exactly, at what point should we expect the worst in terms of FX pricing? Okay, the truth is, the FX market is very dynamic. And today, all prices are low. Tomorrow, you can see all prices higher and foreign investors are, are, are confident in our economy is being restored gradually and so we can see inflow of foreign investment. So more, most of the time, I like to look at the forex, the foreign exchange market and pricing in the market on the short term. But the truth is, yes, even though reserves seem to be adequate at the moment, we're still vulnerable at this point. However, there needs to be long-term measures put in place because we've been borrowing over the course of the years, to sh the past few years, to shore up the reserves. At some point, those external obligations will fall due. A lot of things can happen between now and then when the external obligations will fall due. So that's why I try not to look at the foreign exchange market, have so much of a long-term view about the foreign exchange market. Take, for example, earlier in the year, there was no communication about the fact that we were going to, even though everybody had already expected it, but there was no firm communication from the government that we're going to go back to the euro bond market this year. But two weeks ago, we've been hearing conversations about how the euro bond is going to happen, most likely in the first half of the year, and they're going to raise $3.3 billion, which should obviously show up the reserves level in, in, in the short term, and increase the capacity of the CBN to continue defending the Naira over the course of the year. But what happens next year, or over the next 5, 10, 30 years, when all these obligations which we're borrowing fall due, and we have not been able to increase our foreign exchange earning capacity over that period to be able to meet those obligations. So right now, I cannot particularly say in the, at what point in the long term when a devaluation is going to happen, because I also know that the government is doing a lot of things at the moment to try and see how they can um, improve domestic production of certain things. On Friday, the head of fixed income at UBA, Bankole Udusonya, gave a wrap-up of the market and an outlook for next week on our business morning program. Let's take a listen. There's some scarcity of instrument. Given the amount of monies that matured last week, on February 13th, we saw 600 billion coming from matured 2020 bonds. Uh, most of the holders of the matured bonds planned to reinvest in the, at the um, auction on Wednesday, but um, since the debt management office um, restricted the amount uh, that was sold from 150 to 100, it means that we have seen a bullish market. And there's a huge gap between bid and offer in the market, simply meaning 
that were on for 2049 the longest tenor bond, for instance, willing buyers are willing to buy at 12 percent, but we are seeing offers at as low as 11.9. Uh, so it's a bullish market, not just only because of the reduced amount on offer or that was sold, but because of liquidity. We are still carrying liquidity from last week, maturity on bonds and maturities of OMO that came in last Thursday and yesterday. Uh, what has happened is that the amount sold by the central bank also is, is reduced compared to the amount maturing. So it's a liquid market, very bullish, and we expect this to continue into next week when federal allocations will be coming in. Another $350 billion will be coming in for states and local government. This is expected to compound the liquidity situation we have at hand with fewer instruments in the market. I know you've given us an outlook for next week now, but tell us what the system liquidity is looking like as at this morning. Okay, the figure is expected to be beyond uh, one trillion uh, because I imagine that federal allocations could have been paid already and we have not seen the debits of the bond auction on Wednesday hit, hit the system. But by our estimation, we have a one trillion liquidity situation on our hand and we expect this to continue into next week. Uh, we know the central bank would likely spring into action by issuing probably uh, more OMO bills to mop this up because if that's not done, there could be more pressure on the FX side where we've seen pressure lately. Well, that's the sound of the closing gong at the Nigerian Stock Exchange and it's being rung by an independent non-executive director at International Breweries, Oluwatoin Odulate. The company visited the stock exchange after the successful listing of 165 billion naira rights issue on the NSC. I'd like to thank the stockbrokers of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, thank you for having us and thank you for the role that you played in assisting us to make this rights issue a successful one. As you all know, this is the largest rights issue that's been done on the market, so we're very, very proud of that. And uh, I would just like to say that you should watch out for us, international breweries, as becoming the market leaders and for that stock price to start moving up, up, up. You can quote me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, let's have a quick review of the various market activities. This week, the bears dominated the domestic equities market amidst continual risk of sentiment and the absence of a positive market catalyst. After four trading days of losses, the benchmark index dipped by 1.32% week-on-week to 27,388.62 points. A total turnover of 1.49 billion shares worth 17.906 billion naira were traded in 18,515 deals by investors on the floor of the exchange. Analyzing the performance by sectors, Significant losses recorded in the consumer goods sectors dampened the market performance after the index plummeted by 6.75%. The banking sector shared 2.64%, insurance lost 2.12%, and oil and gas was down 1.28%. On the flip side, the industrial goods counter gained 1.02%. Now, looking at the unlisted securities market, the NASD OTC market closed the trading week on a positive note as the NSI and market capitalization closed the week at 700.39 points and 503.55 billion naira, respectively. Volume traded was 0.51 million units valued at 72.91 million naira in 36 deals. Overall, the trading occurred in 7 out of 39 securities admitted to trade on the NASD OTC market. Now, trading in the bond secondary market was bullish as yields readjusted to the lower primary market auction stop rate. The average yield across instruments contracted by 28 basis points to close at 9.8%. But analysts at Codros Research expect sustained demand next week across the bond yield curve as market players seek to reinvest excess liquidity from incoming maturities.